Diary of my beauty routine, and um, maybe uh, in the future I could share these um, references with you because I think you really need it because. Um, There's a lot of pop culture advice about beauty and there's like everything about beauty is so pop culture that um, I feel bad that, um, that, you know, beautiful people, especially women, beautiful women, I feel like are under attack by the beauty industry. And it's, you know, it's motivated by that culture to attack the women. And um, I feel like no one would ever believe me. And um, like maybe in the future, like these recommendations could help someone. So, um, so um, first things, a uh, shower is something everyone does every day to get clean or regularly to get clean. So um, I like to shower only at night. Um, I especially prefer showering after I go to work. So when I come home from work, the first thing I want to do is take a shower and take off all my makeup and change my clothes. And I don't like showering in the morning time because it's such a, first of all, your bed is like the place where you press your body against your bed. You push your face against your bed and you lay in it like for a huge amount of time. So, your bed is going to have, like, the most intimate contact with you. So, if you shower or, you know, you're always clean when you approach your bed, like, that's, like, that will help keep your bed clean for longer. And, uh, um, it, 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 it helps preserve the cleanliness of your bed just by you being clean when you enter your bed. Um, but I mostly like to shower at night because of I worked a morning shift. So as soon as I came home, I wanted to take off the clothes because I didn't like the clothes that I had to wear for work. I wanted to wear my own kind of clothes. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do is take off those clothes and I wanted to take off all the makeup because after doing, putting so much effort into my job, usually my makeup would not look like it did when I applied it in the morning. So I wanted all that off. And, um, so, and also like it's the second reason is, is that you never know when you're going to go to bed. I don't think that every, every anybody goes to sleep unless they're really disciplined like at a specific time every night there's always going to be a little bit of leeway so um uh because i tend to have like different projects that i'm working on where i will stay up really late and then i will have to be ready in the morning then when I get up in the morning and I'm like, oh my God, you stayed up way too late last night. Now you have to do this, do that, do this, do that. And I just won't do it. I will hit that snooze button, but I cannot go to work without taking, without being clean. Like I cannot go to work without new clothes and having my makeup on. So if you asked me to do that, it would be like really really uncomfortable for me the entire day 
to not feel like I was clean. And so I have to take that shower at night and I don't want to take it in the morning. And then, and you know, if I, if I don't get to take my shower at night and I have to go to work in the next day, you know, not having took a shower, it's very uncomfortable for me, even though I don't smell or anything. It's just like when you take a shower, you, it kind of revives all of your skin because your skin absorbs all the moisture. It absorbs water. And then as you're moving about throughout the day, your skin loses moisture, but it doesn't get it back. And that's like another big, um, like deception about beauty is that you have to drink so and so many glasses of water every day, because if you do that, you will flush out your blood. Your blood will become like more dilute so every time you drink water like it goes into your blood and there comes a point where if you drink like three glasses of water you're gonna lose energy and you're you're gonna flush the hormones out of your body that you need to stay like active and strong and you know you know even good hormones you flush them out of your body so um you, if you become, if your blood becomes really dilute, then you basically wash out, washing the power out of your blood. You wash your power out. So I had this theory before that if you, um, you know, they say that the body's made up of water and you're supposed to have all this water, but the deception is, is that your skin is the most porous organ and the largest in your entire body when they said your body's made up of 60 percent water where do you think all that water is it's at your skin your skin's the most porous object and it has a huge that like most of the water content because you've got bones and your muscles are thicker they don't have as much water in them so um uh absorbing um that water and as i say you know oh, if you want to be beautiful you should drink more water no, that's not true you should your skin needs water so um that's another good reason for um you know getting um, water to your body especially if you're really active and you're sweating all the time then your all of your water from your skin is going up in the air and you can drink all the water from a glass that you want and your skin is not going to get it back not the way that you expect it to until you shower so um uh, i found that um drinking a lot of water every day was very draining to, to my energy so um you should drink water but not that much and um so showering um at night so beauty is a frame of mind beauty is in, is so much a frame of mind because when you wake up in the morning and the sunlight is spilling through your window and the birds are chirping and the, there's a warm summer breeze and the grass outside is green and you can smell the air like who cannot feel beautiful in that environment um, but, um, so beauty is a frame of mind. And when you wake up in the morning and you want to, and you wake up in the morning and you come out of bed and you haven't had your shower yet and you're like, looking for my clothes and you're thinking like, oh, I got to take a shower and then I got to change my clothes and all this other stuff. Like, gosh, I feel ugly. Like I want to wake up in the morning. Like, freaking I want to wake up in the morning and I don't know. I'm already perfectly scented, ready to go. And all I have to do is like accessorize by putting on my makeup. Like that's beauty to me. So if I have to take a shower in the morning time, I feel like I failed myself. And like, I, I, I feel like uglier. I'm like, oh yeah, get your stinky body into the shower 
because no one wants to see you in the morning. And meanwhile, you're all like, oh, I don't want to wake up. And then you have to go, go in the shower before you're even presentable because you're dirty or because you smell bad. Like, I hate that. Like, I want to wake up next to my husband, just like ready for him to kiss me and So, um, another thing I, uh, is, um, I realized is, um, I guess with the bad breath thing is, um, I realized that when I use toothpaste, um, then I'll wake up the next day and my breath smells like a dog's breath. And like, that's very strange because I was having allergic reactions last year and, um, it, it exhausted me. Like I was up all the time. Like I had to shower and shower and shower and shower and shower and clean and wipe. And, and I was exhausted, like beyond belief. It was such an injustice. And, um, so, um, you know, so I kind of like got out of the habit, especially like getting paranoid about the whole, you know, um, world conspiracy stuff that, um, what is in these products. And, um, so I didn't really try to use toothpaste for as much. And like, instead what I would do is take a warm washcloth. And this is another thing about beauty that people weren't told. Like, I didn't know this really from my mother or like, we didn't, my mother didn't really have a beauty routine that she ever taught us. So, um, using a warm washcloth um, on your face in the shower is like five trillion times better than any face wash you will ever have. And, um, because it, the, just a warm washcloth, literally, it's just like the fibers in the cloth are just like, you know, kind of gently pulling off uh, any dead skin cells and only that. And, um, I, so I would use a washcloth on my like every other day because now that I'm getting a little older, like I'm really paranoid about getting wrinkles because like you notice them when you get to be like past your twenties and then you start to have like, maybe one day you wake up and your skin's really dry and you have a wrinkle. You're like, Oh my God, no. So like you notice it, like going from never having wrinkles and then all of a sudden you start to see wrinkles. You're like, no, 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 no wrinkles. So, um, that will also help for some reason, like help stop you from getting wrinkles is to use uh, a, a um, washcloth. And, um, I just use soap. And cause I like very worried about products. So, uh, 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 you know, like I love makeup, but I'm worried about products, different types of products. So, um, uh, okay. Other things about the shower. So, um, Right. So another thing is, is that like, I naturally have, um, Spanish hair, like big, bushy, curly, black Spanish hair. And, um, like my hair was always like so big. And when I was um, younger, like my mother would, um, like she would be upset with me because I, she said like my hair was too hard to comb and she would like cut my hair and it was like so like de de feminizing or whatever to have to be like have your hair. I remember one time that she got so fed up with me. She took me to the barber and he like chopped all my hair off and made my hair really short. And I was like horrified. I hated that man. I never wanted to see that man again. And like it, it, it like hurt my self esteem so freaking much to have short hair. And my mom was like, Oh, you look like Demi Moore from the movie Ghost. And I was like, I hate her. <laughs> so. Um, uh, something I learned uh, when like having hair extensions is that like you can't so like I bleached my hair a lot and you know when you have your normal hair you don't have to worry about so much with tangling because you can just and it's all fine but um with the like hair extensions I'm like gosh Catherine like if this is what you do to your hair extensions like that's what you were doing to your real hair so um what I realized is so don't wash your hair every day. Well, here's the problem. 
um, especially like as teenagers, you tend to work like maybe, I don't know, like in big retail stores or in fast food. And if somebody tells you not to wash your hair every day, you're like, are you joking? Like, do you know what your hair smells like when you get out of work? So one, one thing that I realized is that your hair picks up a lot of odors. Um, if you're wondering, if you're wondering like every day, like, you know, oh, something smells really nice. Unless you were working out and it's because your armpits are smelly, then it's probably your clothes. Um, because your hair picks up all the odors and you're wondering like, gosh, it still smells like steak in here. Well, it's probably because it's in your hair and you don't even know because your hair picks up those odors. Like if you cook and then you come into the next room, like your hair is carrying all those odor molecules. And, um... So if someone tells you, like, not to wash your hair every day, I'm like, are you kidding? I'm like, herbal essence is like, <laughs> like no way. I'm, I'm washing my hair every day. But um, it, it really hurts it. So, so um, you can if you just rinse your hair with water, with just water, um, hot water, and don't try too hard, you know, with the water and your just like rinse with hot water soak up your hair and then get out okay or this what it will well, get to that um then um yeah it picks up all those odor molecules out of your hair yeah and that's really important so no you shouldn't wash your hair every day because if you do you will be itchy and you will your hair will be itchy that's the one time in your life so what you do is like every uh, every other day you shampoo or um, soap, but um, every day because you don't want to take it out of the shower every day and you're in a drama situation where you have to worry about the smell. Okay, then like coating your hair with like some kind of spray or perfume doesn't take the chicken fat smell out of your hair. So the only thing really to do is purify with water. So you rinse your hair with water, you put conditioner in the end, and you don't wash it though. You just put conditioner at the end and, and, and it ends your hair. And um, you know, you just wash it every other day. So and one more thing about skin is that it um is a The guys like, and then all of a sudden the girls are like, ah! and they all go running after him. It's because like scent is like very intoxicating. And that is because, and I know this because I study neuroscience and I can tell you everything about your brain. You have this organ, this ubiquitous, it's part of your brain. It's, it's attached to your brain stem, but the back of your nose is what gives you it. And um, it's responsible. And um, it's, so it does this by like um, picking up chemicals in the air, like different chemicals, and then the chemicals release it from that little nucleus. And that's how you like, um, that's how you get your hair to smell better. So that they also say like, smell is so incredible that if you look at other people, they look the same as you. So, um, so like, I was gonna say passionate. It like puts the passion in it. That's the wrong word. It puts the passion into your noses. And um, so what I learned in neuroscience is that your nucleus accumbens it um it's tagging all of your scents, the scents that you smell, with sentiment. So like you get sentiment, like I have a sentiment of love towards I have a sentiment of love towards chocolate. I have a sentiment of love towards um, passion and love. And I have a sentiment of uh, anxiety and fear. <laughs> so, oh, that's my camera. I have that same sentiment. Are you kidding? So nice. So nice. So nice. So, so
Oh, guys, Katie, I'm sorry. Okay, so, um, so your, so what happens is your nose is trying to pick up these chemicals in order to, um, to, uh, to receive, like, these scents that you're, that you're experiencing. And, um, so those chemicals, they stay on that little nerve. And the only way really to flush them out is with water. So, or, like, over time, like, the, the chemicals, and so you're sitting here thinking like, okay, so I'm going to spray my perfume around my nose. And then those perfume molecules are going to go up into the little membrane that you're getting from when you're trying to pick this up in. And then like, they're going to stay there until you break down. And I'm like, ew, that's kind of gross. So I've like broken down like chemical grenades on like my whole face, on my inside my membrane, my nose. Like, yeah. So a little bit weird, but that's why I really love and respect. The religion of Islam teaches you that every time you do a prayer, that you're supposed to wash and like your, not only your hands and rinse your face, but then you take water into your nose and inhale it, not all the way down your throat, so you're like choking, like you just swallowed water, but just like gently inhale into your nose and then spit it and spit it back out, and you will smell like you just got out of the swimming pool. Like you'll like be you'll be like oh. It's just like if I just got out of the swimming pool, like there's like water up my nose or whatever, and it rinses out your your membrane. And like considering that that's like literally attached to your brain, it's probably like really awesome. And in considering that nowadays we stay inside and we're all sitting here like cooking, you know, this awesome like meal in the kitchen or whatever, and like walking around our house and like spraying perfume. But like back in the day. We were outside. We cooked over a campfire and all that smoke and flames were like going in the air. So we smelled like river rocks, okay? And we smelled like leaves. Not, we were not in a smoke chamber of a house while there's an awesome dinner cooking over there. So it was not the same. And, um, okay, so that's everything about shower and, um, and, Hair. The one last thing about your hair that because I wish that I was taught these things that I, I didn't know and I had to learn the hard way is like uh, so I always put conditioner in the bottom part of my hair and only just the tiniest bit on the top so I don't get oily and greasy up here. Um, but then you can get the hamburger scent out of your hair if you work in fast food and you will smell good and you should comb your hair in the shower and they always tell you don't comb your hair when it's wet, really? Like, that's what shampoo and conditioning is all about. Because when you do that, your hair goes like perfectly in line, like micro alignment, perfect perfection. And it's supposed to be like that. So when you get out of the shower, you should never have to comb. So if you do, if your hair is still, you know, tangly, then you should comb your hair in the shower and just use combs that don't have pointy tips on the comb. So that will help it. Like use brushes that have little balls on the ends of their brush bristles. Okay. And then the other thing about um, your hair is that um, you should let it dry uh, before combing it again. And that's like so weird when you have like a Spanish hair like mine. Because you're like, what do you mean lift my hair? Because I will be like a bush. So what I learned to do is like, you know, without having to style my hair every day, because I want to roll out of bed and look like Sleeping Beauty, okay? So, um, what I would do is just, like, put your hair in a position where, um, that, that you want, that will help it for when you dry, like, back in the old days, the women used to, like, you know, put their hair in, like, little hair nuts and whatever, and, um, younger like in catholic school i used to always put my hair like up because they made us so i would always put my hair up and i would be like using like hairable essences and then like by the end of the day like when i would take my hair out of the ponytail it was just like push perfume and like silky waves like waves of perfection so what i learned to do now is like i don't like to have like that like ribbon from like having your hair up so I like to just roll my hair. Like, um, um, so 
I will just like twist my hair like this. And curly hair and I don't want to just elaborate it like I know it will have curls like all the freaking time. Um but I like the way this looks so it's really kind of hard to get the hair and then pull pull the end up and then put my braids like that and pull them back and then pull them back and just kind of put it all in one place and then I have my long hair like that. So I have edges in the back of my hair. And I'm like do it down lower and tight so then you'll have so then when I when my hair dries and I take it out then um it will be like these like perfect little silky waves that hang exactly at the right spot and there's not like this like crease lump from like my ponytail like up here or anything like that and also like not having like too much like wrinkles and stuff and stuff like that because right now I don't have any like wrinkles or anything like that and I just like let's make scrunchies and so she taught me how to make scrunchies which is like super fun and it's super easy and stuff and another thing is that if you have like really wrinkly hair and like you're always like having like stuff around your face and like looking weird and stuff so like I I love to freaking have like a hairband and like if you use the hairband that goes all the way around then you have like this like little lumper like lumpy crease like there that like really is so annoying and like you know like bothersome it's just like always like flapping up down whatever and then you have like then when you try to take your hair out from it drying then it's like you know your hair is like starting up here and then comes down and just like well you did that to yourself didn't you whoops i didn't mean to so i like to use like a barrette or whatever like a pretty little headband because then when your hair dries then you're gonna have like this perfect little like you know creasing or like if you want to use a fat um one or a skinny one then you won't have so much of your hair your bangs pulled back but then you'll have like this perfect little wave that you never had to use a curling iron for so um those that's everything about the hair and um what i realized from exhaust <clears throat> is that if you don't take your makeup off every day which I used to take my makeup off like religiously like I always take my makeup off before I go to bed I don't know why probably because I showered probably because I showered all the time but uh, before bed so but um then when I started to get like really exhausted and like overworked and um I would like keep my mascara on like my eye, my eyelashes start to get a little they get like itchy after a day and then like I would like literally pull on my eyelashes and my eyelashes would freaking start coming out and I'd be like oh my god I'm losing I'm losing eyelashes I'm losing thick luscious lashes because I left my mascara on and I guess the mascara must be like some kind of like Texas oil well where it seeps into your pores and it like burns out everything in your skin or something and causes you to lose your lashes because that's what happened. It was very upsetting. So last thing is um, the skin for beauty um, is um, I um, like when I was like 20 years old like I never wanted to get old like I was very afraid of dying old and alone and like very paranoid because of my upbringing so like i was afraid of getting old like i wanted to like literally die young die young and that's a horrible thing especially when you're a beautiful american like you should feel privileged and and happy and instead i was ungrateful and i was so afraid of dying that i wanted to that i didn't uh, afraid of dying alone that i didn't want to be old i was like you're gonna be old and then you're gonna be ugly and no one likes ugly old people and you're going to hate yourself and you're not going to be able to live with yourself. So you should die young. So that's like really a huge part of my personality is the whole thing. Uh, try to find a way to not die young or to not die old, not die old. Try to find a way to not die old, which is a very horrible mentality to have. So um, when I was 20 years old, I started using like their like anti-aging serum, like the best anti-aging serum. Um, and... Uh, and um i was like always like really surprised by like how acidic it was like 
it's like, wow, this is like this nice glossy anti-aging serum for like $25 or $30 for this tiny little amount. And um, I would use it like every day. And um, I guess because when I was 20, like my skin would get dry or whatever. And then when it's dry, you like, see these little creases and you're like, no, wrinkles are bad. And so um, those are not legit wrinkles. Those are dry skin wrinkles. So, um, I would use, try different anti-aging serums and I would like be so surprised by how like acidic they were. I was like, why would you want to use something that's like lemon, lemony, oily on your eyes when it's supposed to be anti-aging? Like, isn't that like really bad for like anything that's like anything remotely like acid to be using your eyes? Um, so, um which is kind of ironic, but, um, so I did not like using anti-aging serums, and, like, even now, like, my mother buys me, like, anti-aging stuff, or what serum, or, or, like, little, you know, uh, like, gift things, and, um, containers, and I never use them, because they're, like, they're, like, the best, they're, like, well, I don't even know, Lancome, or whatever, I don't freaking know what, what kind they are, and, um, want to use them because I'm afraid that they're gonna like hurt my skin and make them look like skin. And um so what I have been doing was my mom used to always use this Nivea cream and then like at like twenty years old I started to realize this was really awesome for your face. So like I think the way that these creams used to do it is that they used to like literally take this I think they called it cold cream. I don't know why they call it cold cream because it's cold um, and they will like put it like all over their face. And what's really important is that um, you would think like, oh, I need to worry about like my eyes, like under my eyes. But like, if you don't get and like, if you if women who like have facelifts know this, because they're like, no, the doctors they talking about like injecting here, injecting here, and I'm, and you're just like, I just wanted to look younger, like not have my face droop. Like, why are you putting all this weird stuff? So you have to like actually consider like your face as one unit and uh it's like you don't want any part of the unit like dragging so we should put the cream all over your whole face and i had a really good result with this video cream especially i love to put it on like super super thick like so my face is like a grease bomb but if you wash your face every day here's the thing if, if you put tons of 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 uh, a lotion on your face and then you have like or, or and you don't wash your makeup off before bed you'll get pimples or if you're really young and you have a lot of hormones still but um it's the makeup that gives you pimples it's not the not the creams it's not the oiliness of your skin that gives you pimples i know because i never get pimples and only time I ever get a pimple is because of leaving makeup on, which I just did recently, which is very rarity. So I always loved using Nivea cream all over my face, and then I put this one specific one on. So you know how you get hydrocortisone, and hydrocortisone is like you know to put so like you won't get a scar or something like that. You won't get scars in your skin, and they're always like, oh, don't put it your eyes and I was like really okay what I don't remember how this happened but I've been doing this for a couple of years but I was like really you know you say a lot of things like you tell people you tell people to like uh, uh, help stop the bacterial E. coli growth to like dip shit in sugar and meanwhile sugar cultures are exactly how you breed E. coli so like you guys are really sick um so what I, so I'm not listening to them. So um, I put, I like to put this around my eyes like every week at least. Um, it's um, hydrocortisone, straight hydrocortisone. And I love to put it on thick because like if you put this and I only put it around my eyes and you pretend to put it around the top of your eyes, you'll find like your face melting and your, then it gets in your eyes and it bothers your eyes. But if you put hydrocortisone cream around your eyes, you will not go blind and you will wake up in the morning 
looking like you just got done at like freaking Hollywood plastic surgeon. So, and that, and there's one better than this hydrocortisone cream that I use for my face. And that is, I never knew growing up how much you should moisturize or whatever. It's weird, but it's like the whole body, the skin is an organ thing is um, you should not necessarily kick on like tons of lotion like all the time but if you every day like go into the bathroom like two times a day and you just take water and just like put it over your face and just like what water set in your face you will look young you will look young and freaking beautiful and it sucks if you're wearing a lot of eye makeup which i love wearing liner because then your face trips all the time so i guess what you is take a hot washcloth and just like pat your face so you don't ruin your makeup but it will just kind of like refresh your makeup and you just want to add water to your face like a little plant water your face or like fix your face that's another thing i used to do i used to get like a little dollar store like you know pink little spray bottle fill it with water and then i'd just be sitting here like <laughs> and fix your face with water instant hollywood facelift and the other thing that's essential is coconut oil this is a hidden this is the last thing it's a hidden beauty uh secret that okay so they say that like you know um, there's patterns in nature and your body and like living things in nature they like imitate each other their patterns imitate so i would definitely have to say that if you want like an awesome facelift like hollywood facelift then take it take um your advice from a coconut okay the coconut has this nice firm clean white like thick. think just think about the coconut and just think before you get that botox become friends with a coconut so what i do also i do this like this is literally coconut, coconut. and you know it's funny because it says on here this is no good this blah 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 blah, blah. But they literally like said on the thing, they're like, you can use this, you can use this on your face, on your body for cooking your food. And I'm just like, wow, like what can you literally cook with and beautify with? So weird. You can use it for cooking and for beauty. That's weird. But this is one of those things. So this one is like the only option. You have to find like a little glass jar because originally I started trying to mix coconut oil with water so I could have my own like little coconut oil water mixture but the coconut always kept like solidifying because coconut oil is solid at room temperature but if your room is warm it will it will get liquidy like whenever I have my heater on then all of a sudden it gets like a little liquidy but if you put it in the microwave for 20 seconds or 30 seconds you will have a bath of coconut and um, you can put this on solid or wet. And I love to, every time I get out of the shower or, you know, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do, um, I, I will rinse my face with water, um, just with water, not always soap unless I'm my face is dirty. And I will um, freaking spread coconut oil all over my face like I'm a Christmas ham. And um, you can do it like wet or you can do it solid because if you were to take this solid coconut oil like this and you were to just like smush it in your hand and start rubbing it on your face it's going to melt on your fingers it melts on your fingers literally melting on my fingers so you can do it solid or so it could always be like your beauty cream at this point i put like six layers of like way too much so i'm gonna have to go like wipe my face but um coconut oil if you use coconut oil on your face this is like the i don't even know if it's a good example this is like the facelift that a lot of people are talking about some people are talking about like this is for avoidance so like if you are like 18 years old you will look like you're 12. you will literally look like a 12 year old if you put this on your face and if you're like 
25-year-old. You will look like 16 if you rub coconut oil all over your face like that. And that's something that Nivea cream cannot match. And um, the hydrocortisone doesn't match. But I also loved how, like, when I would use hydrocortisone and Nivea cream around my eyes, and then I would wake up in the morning, I would look like Kylie Jenner, like, just that just got her lips plumped. Like, my eyes were, like, plumped up. Like, perfect. Like, sexy little, like, um, post-surgery eyes. Like, look at my eyes. Like, they're so pretty. So, those are my beauty tips. Those are, like, just the surface of them, which is hair and face, which is what the most people think. And also, don't drink too much water, because that's wrongful.